Where is the faith of Gideon? You know, Gideon, let me tell you about Gideon. Gideon was a young man that was full of ideas. He was thinking. He was using his mind. Gideon was a young man that believed in critical thinking and in analytical thinking. So he was always sitting down at the, at the, you know, at the bottom of a tree and, you know, at the, you know, just escaped being under the shadow and, uh, and sitting down there and always thinking, where is this God? We read about this mighty God, this almighty God, this all-powerful God. They said he delivered our fathers from Egypt. They said he, 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 he sent plague to, to the children of, to the, to the, to the Egyptians and did wonders. This same God that they said sent manna to us from heaven. This God that they said parted the Red Sea for us. This God that they said did all these wonders. Where is he? Why is, why is it that we his people, we are now in a, in a beggarly state. We are now capped. We are now enslaved. We are now uh, in bondage to another country. Where is this God? Why should we just be reading about him in history? I think it's high time for somebody to arise today and begin to challenge that same God. That if it's the same God that is the God of Moses, that it should become your God today. That if it is the same God that is the God of Abraham, that you want to do what Abraham did today. That if it is the same God though, that you are serving, that caused Moses to deliver his own nation, that you want to arise and begin to be a deliverer. That you want to become a deliverer right now of your own nation. You want to, it's, it's high time to begin to think like Gideon. Critical thinking, analytical thinking, and begin to throw yourself some very serious questions. Why am I here? Why are we here? Why am I living the way we are living? Why is my nation the way it is? Why is God not coming to help? How much prayer have we prayed? Why is it that because God is waiting for you? God is waiting on you. So when God saw the heart of this young man and saw that this guy, you know, had a, he had the mind of bringing change, he did not just succumb to the situation. He did not just submit to the situation. He did not just say, okay, that is how life is. Well, this is how everybody lives. There is nothing I can do about it. We are in bondage now. And, you know, there is nothing you can do about it. That is just life. No. He was thinking. He was challenging the history that he was taught. He was challenging the God that he had not seen yet. Why should you be the God in the past? I want you to be the God in the now. Why should you be the God far off? I want you to be the God nearby. I don't need you to be the God of yesterday. I want you to be the God of today. I don't need you to be the God of history. I want you to be the God of, you know, of, of the present. And God saw into his heart. God saw into his passion. And God sent an angel to him. God came to him, actually. That was the Lord that appeared to him. And God appeared to him and told him, Wow, you man of valor. You are a mighty man of warrior. You are a mighty man of valor. He said, wow, wow. I'm not seeing myself as any mighty man of valor. I am nobody. I don't have, I, we are in captive. We are in bondage. Where is this God? He started challenging God right there. He started challenging, you know, the angel. He started throwing questions to him. Where is the valor? I can't see any valor. Where is this God that you've been talking to us about? You know, he had a holy anger. He asked his holy, a holy anger. A holy anger. And that holy anger is needed to be a revolutionary. Maybe you are, you are feeling that kind of you know, irritation in you from time to time. Or maybe you are feeling that kind of anger. You are being provoked by things that are going on around you. Well, it's time to get the challenge. It's time to accept the challenge. It's time for you to accept the challenge and say, I am not happy with the situation that is going on with the gay marriages. I am not happy with the situation that is going on about prayer in schools. I am not happy. It's a holy indignation. It's a holy indignation that must arise within us. We must arise and say, no, Lord, something must change. And if something must change, don't just wait for something to change. You change it. That is what God wants us to do. That is the lesson we should learn from this man. The lesson we should learn from this man is that, you know, ungodliness insulted him. 